Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of the Switch It Up Show. My name is Glenn and I will be your host as we explore the wonderful world that is indie Nintendo Switch games. And, and sometimes more, but today I'm pretty sure that we're sticking with the classics on the Nintendo Switch. But you know I can't satisfy the itch for the Switch alone. Oh no, 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 ladies and gentlemen. I need help. I need the one. The only Seth Trav. Hey, buddy. How are you? I'm doing well, my man. Better for hearing your voice. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, my game is on the uh, PS5. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, we switched it up as we usually do. There it is, my man. Let's keep these tunes rolling for a little bit before we stroll right into our first game. Anamanaguchi, ladies and gentlemen, Anamanaguchi. Trying this uh, like a little bit of a different manual fade here on this show. Trying to make the best of a bad situation. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoy. Let us know over on the Twitter at Switch It Up Show. We're more than happy to talk to you about podcast production or either one of the games that we're reviewing here on the show today. So since this is a Nintendo Switch show, why don't we go ahead and start off with the Nintendo Switch game. Despite how like excited I am to hear about Seth Trav's review, because I am a big fan of the PS5 as well. Uh, but let's start off with <laughs> Sense, a cyberpunk ghost story. Uh, this Ooh. game is $19.99 on the Nintendo eShop. You are eligible for 100 golden coins uh, when you purchase this. Uh, and uh, let me go ahead and hit you with a little bit of the synopsis here. In a dystopian sci-fi uh, gets a survival horror twist. Inspired by classic adventure games and the origins of the survival horror genre, Sense, a cyberpunk ghost story, celebrates the slow, cerebral creep of the dread inside, uh, instead of relying on over-the-top action or jump scares. With careful attention to pacing, atmosphere, storytelling, this futuristic tale seamlessly blends 2.5 exploration and problem solving with the suspenseful ghost encounters that act as paranormal glitches in our own reality. In Neo Hong Kong, in the year 2083, I'm like, I'm like Neo Tokyo, I'm like Akira, Neo Tokyo. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, a young woman named Mei Lin Mak is dragged into a maelstrom of supernatural horror. As she peers into the century-old mystery, Mei is forced to que question her perception of reality and her trust of the cybernetic eyes. Under the neon lights of a cyberpunk cityscape, the ruins of Chong Sing apartments hide a bloody secret, illuminated by the traditions of Chinese folklore and the innovations of the industrial future. If there is any hope for escaping this nightmare, Mei Lin must explore this complex, piercing stories of 14 lost souls, then discovering the truth of her own family curse. It features survive the horror using adventure mechanics and exploration, experience a beautiful, erotic, hand-drawn portrait art style with western and eastern influences unlock additional outfits some of which alter the interactions throughout the game keep track of the immersive lore with a convenient journal feature discover multiple game it says game plus modes uh, i guess it means game and modes but it's weird because they put the plus right next to game strange uh, alternate endings and hidden tracks get in the mood with a visceral cinema length soundtrack from the people over at hot oh it's hot <laughs> Top Hat Studios. Uh, this game was released on January 7th in the year 2021. It is an adventure role-playing game uh, published by East Asia Soft. Um, this game has a trailer on the eShop. I always like a game that has like a video trailer in it. I think it's really cool. Uh, instead of just giving you the screenshots to go off of, you can get a little bit of video uh, play for it as well. Um, this is very much 
Um, you know, in the last episode, we covered Sam and Max, which is a point-and-click, you know, adventure-type game. And since a cyberpunk ghost story uh, is kind of like an anime, um, like, neon-infused uh, take on that. Uh, and they're basically playing, going off of, like, the old-school, like, horror games, like the point-and-click ones. Uh, but if you've ever played, um, probably the game that's, I feel like, most close to it, if you've ever played Clock Tower... It's on PlayStation 1, uh, and it's also on Super Nintendo back in the day. Uh, it was kind of like one of the precursors to uh, Resident Evil. There's like a whole series of Clock Tower games. They're super expensive. Uh, Clock Tower 1, 2, and 3. Uh, there's even uh, like a television show that you can watch on it from Japan. Uh, and in Clock Tower, you're kind of going through this haunted house, uh, and this dude's got these big creepy scissors, and he comes after you. Um, but it's laid out very much so in a way like this, where you're going from scene to scene. Uh, I guess it's like that 2.5D in the sense that it has like a little bit of depth to it, um, but uh, not not like a lot. It's more it's more flat than uh, than anything else. Uh, and basically, you're going through these different areas in this city in the future with all like the neon lights at night. Uh, really big on that like neon aesthetic that you see in so many games. Um, and it's an interesting blend of that and also like a creepy ghost story. Uh, and they they're right. They don't really have any type of those jump scares. They're just trying to make each scene more uncomfortable. Uh, with like creepy atmosphere and I feel like the art is kind of like the like this game's blessing and also in some ways this game's curse um, because like the art on this definitely takes a forefront uh, they definitely mention hand-drawn uh, graphics in this and you totally see it while you're playing this game um, the game kind of looks like an anime or a cartoon uh, with some really cool interactive features like the lighting and stuff like that it's combined in a very like very, I feel like a very effective way. Uh, but this game caught, um, like not even a little bit, caught a decent amount of flack over on Twitter from certain communities uh, because of like you know the adult themes in this game. This game is rated M. We've um, very adult, huh? I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't think prostitution it- abound. It's not really, like, we've, we've covered a good amount of, like, mature rated games here on the show. Yeah, we have. Uh, and, like, I mean, there are definitely, like, this game is, like, kind of along the same lines as, like, like you know, you've got the character who's, like, going through and, like, trying to find out these ghost stories. And basically, she's just, like, she's just in a whole lot of outfits that don't really make sense that you would go out and, huh. like, <laughs> you know, be a detective huh. in. Um, Classic. Uh, Classic. Like, uh, very much RPG like, style. very much like the old school, like, Laura Croft uh, type thing. Not, like, oh, yeah. not maybe not to that extreme, but in some situations in the game, yes. Um, that's what she's where their, that's where their what strongest she's armor is the bikini covering that, nothing. That's it. Uh, and this game, you know, does like harken back to like, you know, it, it definitely has like that anime style. So it very red Sonya. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Um, you know, and like people were basically like saying about this game, they're like, you know, this doesn't make any sense. The game is like, you know, over sexualized. Some people saying that it encourages violence uh, because of this and that the game actually like breaks the law. Um, is it Grand Theft Auto? No, no, no it's not. Uh, and that's oh. a that's a great comparison because, like, you know, like the game itself is rated M. Um, they got rated by the ESRB. Uh, they're like, it is not an A O only game. They they put like a they put like a quote online that says we reject any uh, and all of the aforementioned brazen characterizations of the game. And we'd like to reiterate that our principles uh, with tampering uh, they don't want to, they basically got asked to like censor a bunch of stuff in the game. And they said uh-huh. the game has been rated. It's rated M. It's not adults only. No laws have been broken. <laughs> and then basically yeah. i think a lot of people like um like be- because of like the the artwork that's prominently featured in this game and even like on like the like the icon for it in um in the eShop, it's just i mean i i don't know like like to me you, you look at it and you're like oh it's another one like you know it's another like i don't know like anime like anime like proportion i should we say <laughs> like characters <laughs> like um, and, and I guess classic, classic anime proportion. I hear you. Yeah, and I'm just like, I mean, that's yeah. I mean, it's a cartoon. It's that that's that's the style they're going for. It's definitely not uncommon in anime. It's not uncommon in like in anything on the Nintendo Comic eShop. Books, anything they take it really. they, like video I mean, games. I'm not, I'm pretty not much everything. Necessarily trying to justify it. But no, but I'm just but I'm just saying like I, I don't mean, think that that's necessarily wrong. They're not like you know they're they're not going. <laughs> Like, it, it, there's definitely, like, way worse, there's like, offenders of, of this. Um, yeah. But, like, that, this game got a good amount of attention for it. 
Uh, I guess maybe because they take the heroin and place her in like frightening situations, and it also it's also blended with this. But again, like any sli- I thought you any... were talking about the drug. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I was like they place heroin. No, in no, no. But like any, like you look at like any slasher based, like you know, in the eighties to now, and it's the same. It's the same formula. Like it's not. Oh, yeah. It's nothing. It's Boots nothing. New. Randomly stab sex scene. Like you know? and I think maybe that, that that was what some people took like aversion to with this, but it's just it's just weird because it's the same it's the same type of it's the same type of thing. Um, Their expectations weren't met; they wanted it to be something else. I I suppose so. I feel like like you know it's pretty obvious uh, what this game is, but I mean it, it, at its primary focus, this game is a point and click survival horror sci fi adventure game. Uh, and yes, you can definitely like unlock like other costumes for her, <laughs> but they're not all like they're not all like crazy. Like I don't even think the one that she has on is like to, it, like I mean don't get me wrong, it's there for a reason. Uh, but it's not it's not it's not totally like over the top. Uh, it's not like some of the other games like we've reviewed Galgun on this show. That that's yeah, yeah. That, that's a whole new world compared to compared to this. Um, so sense a cyberpunk ghost story if you are into point and click adventures, if you like horror, if you like sci fi, uh, if you like anime uh, and you like that style like because it's an anime art style that is, that is showcased in this game uh then yeah maybe you might want to you might want to check this out at least uh, go over and watch the trailer because you'll be able to know right away if this game is for you or not um based on that um like i think that the atmosphere in this game is good the music is is good it does a great job like they're they, they say it in the description their job is to build like dread and to make you feel nervous and they do that in an effective way um alien isolation does it way too well uh but this game yeah, def- it does. definitely just focuses on building the atmosphere uh, they're not going for any cheap scares instead they're letting you unfold the story and that's cool like if you want something that you can sit down and play kind of re- relax a little bit more and read the story and like you know take in the atmosphere this game does a great job of establishing that uh provided you can like you know also deal with the uh you know <laughs> with the anime themes shall we say uh, but 1999 on the Nintendo eShop. Uh, let's go with a 3.5 out of five. There you go. Yeah, not too bad, man. No, I don't think so. So, uh, interestingly enough, uh, the game I reviewed was also from East Asia Soft. Asia, Asia Soft. East Asia you got it. Soft. You got it. <laughs> Say that three times fast. <laughs> there we go. Uh, the name of the game is Macrotis. A Mother's Journey. It is $11.99 when you purchase it on the PSN network. I think at one point it was on the eShop, but I honestly don't remember or know. I got the code for the PS4 and played it on my PS5. Uh, The description goes as, Help Bilby find her children in an endearing underground adventure. Macrotis is the story of a mother's relentless search for her missing children. An emotional tale told through the lush 2.5D platforming Filled with thought-provoking puzzles. Climb, jump, and gnaw your way through beautiful yet dangerous environments. Avoid traps and use water physics to to your advantage. As you progress, you'll gain a variety of natural and supernatural abilities to overcome the obstacles in your path. Will you help Mother Bilby rescue her family? Features. Navigate deceptively gorgeous landscapes. Overcome obstacles by gnawing and digging. Manipulate water physics to proceed without drowning. Obtain magical abilities to pass through walls or braze barriers. Gather collectibles to learn the lore of the surrounding world. Again, it is $11.99, and it is rated E for everyone. Mild fantasy violence. Uh, So, the best way I can describe this game is that it's a little bit like Oddworld meets Finding Nemo. Uh, you, you play it in essentially an odd world style where you're just kind of walking around, pulling and tugging at different things. And you do gain different power ups that help you further on in the levels as you go around trying to find your kids. Uh, the story itself, it does pull at your heartstrings. Like it, it, it does, it does tug at you because it's like this sweet voiced little mouse. Uh, or maybe it's a Macrotus. I'm not really sure what that is. Um, but it's this big-eared blue mouse, and it's kind of cool, you know? It, 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 it does make you feel some things. Uh, the music is good, but uh, we're going to start talking about the problems there because the music, for some reason, it just stops, like, hard. Hard stop. Just it, it just cuts off. I don't know what that's about. 
I'm I'm like, where'd where'd the tunes go? I'm just like I'm not even doing anything. I didn't step onto another side of the stage. I didn't I was just walking and the music just hard stops. Um I think that's pretty weird. Uh <laughs> you know. I kinda, and it was pulling me out of the game. Um I'm like kinda graphics, like how the music just stopped here. <laughs> yeah, right? Kinda like on our show. <laughs> um so it, it it feels overall graphically like it's a Windows XP game, like peak Windows XP, uh, or maybe even not that good because like the the backgrounds and everything are kind of lush, but it seems like they're just sort of uh, animated and they don't necessarily like there's some movement to them, but they don't really move. And the way the character moves over top of them character doesn't have a shadow there's not a, like really any shadow cast on anything so it's just kind of this character moving over top of some parts of the landscape that they shouldn't be and they move kind of quickly as opposed to how they actually move their feet so it looks kind of silly um and that kind of takes me out of it uh, another weird thing is like there's a lot of like just odd glitchy things that go on with the game um you you'll have to like climb up ropes and hold R to climb. Um, and then as soon as you get to the top, if you let go, you'll fall, but you can kind of let go and like pull yourself up. But if you just keep holding R, you'll kind of just like jiggle a bunch and kind of go through the rock a little bit. And it's every single time I was climbing, it was happening and I felt like it was super weird. Um, it, it, it plays a little slow overall to me as well. Like I, I don't know, like the puzzles there, there are those sorts of puzzles where they're not necessarily too difficult. Uh, and it's a lot of like, Oh, okay. I just have to do this. Uh, luckily they do make it. So that way you can very quickly reset yourself. Um, just by pressing, I think triangle. Um, so that's, you know, that's a plus. Uh, but overall, the game is a little bit short and all these like buggy sort of things that happen with it. it it's not enough for me to want to tell you to necessarily run out and buy it, especially at eleven dollars and ninety nine cents. So because of that, I'm going to give Macratus a mother's journey a two out of five. A two out of five, my man. Yeah. Yeah, it made me feel some stuff. And like I said, the music is good, but it's weird that it just cuts off randomly and stops. I'm like, where are you where are you, good music? What happened? Yeah. That doesn't that doesn't make that doesn't make any sense. You know, you want you want like a more polished, polished experience. Exactly. Uh, well that's the beauty about, you know, the Nintendo Switch, the PS5, and the variety of games on each of both both of those consoles. You know, if things ever get boring, my man, you can always switch it up. <laughs>